video it's available okay so please go and watch it watch the video completely guys if you didn't understand then then don't tell me that you didn't understand so yeah so in this video we are going we are going to discuss one property okay one single property along with some of the example problems how to execute that property okay again i have uh, already solved and kept these example problems since in the syllabus they have mentioned only statements only of these properties okay uh, i don't have the statements but uh, the how it is uh, analyzed i'm going to tell you all uh, with the some one equation okay linearity property this is the first property okay and uh, with this property you should be I've, i've solved some of the example problems just to make you clear about this property how this property actually works okay before knowing the linearity property you should be knowing one thing that is a power n into u of n it's uh, if you want to convert this to z plane uh, how we can convert it is uh, if you want to convert this equation to z plane we know that this un is equal to 1 always because this is the unit step response okay it is always equal to 1 for all the values of n okay so how to write it simply it you want to convert it to z z domain 1 divided by 1 minus a z inverse okay so this is the general formula for that a of n a power n into un is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus az inverse okay where the value of a would be vary this you should be remembering so now let us see this linearity property so in linearity property basically we are having two sequences okay one is x1 of n and x2 of n if we convert uh, if you want to convert it to z domain that would be x1 of n if we convert it to z domain it would be equal to x1 of z and x2 of n if you want to convert it to in z domain it would be equal to x2 of z okay we have seen it how it works we have seen it okay now this linearity property uh, with respect to dft we have discussed already that is a1 these are some of the constants a1 a2 a1 into x1 of n plus a2 into x1 of n x2 of n if you want to convert it to z domain that would be equal to a1 into x1 of z plus a2 into x2 of z okay yeah so this is basically the linearity property okay i have written in in terms of equation okay so now using this let us see two to three examples which have uh, already solved and kept and let us try to analyze this linearity property so the first example here is the sequence x of n x of n it is given as in the this is the question here that is 3 into where this 3 4 and all are the constants a1 a2 3 into 2 power n minus 4 into 3 power n into u of n okay yeah So x of n would be equal to just multiply u of n to these both terms. That is three into two power n into u of n minus four into three power n into u of n. Okay. For this now, uh, apply this linearity property. This condition here. Okay. That is converted to uh, x of n to z domain. Again, this is of the form a power n u of n. In place of a, we have two. So and three, you write it here since we have three into one is three. So three divided by 1 minus a z inverse that is 1 minus in place of a what we are having 2 so 1 minus 2 z inverse minus 4 divided by again in place of a what we are having 3 so 1 minus 3 z inverse so in this way you should be representing this in the z domain hope this is clear x of n in terms of x of z from uh, time domain to z domain how to convert it by using this uh, step convolution of two sequences is the first uh, property which i'm going to discuss in this session today okay so the convolution of two sequences says that if x1 of n so they would basically they would be giving you two sequences x1 of n and x2 of n you should be converting those two uh, x1 of z and x2 of z that is uh, you should be converting at them into the required z plane and you should be writing the uh, z plane z transform of those two sequences okay the convolution of two sequences or we can say that multiplication of two sequences says that whenever we multiply these two sequences okay the resultant you should be getting x1 of n into x2 of n its z plane should be equal to x1 of z into x2 of z okay so this is basically the convolution of two sequences next important property is time reversal okay very easy nothing much is there in this okay time reversal one sequence you would be giving it's uh, in z plane it is represented as x of z 
and x of minus n is in z plane it is represented it as x of z inverse okay direct computation of dfts okay direct computation uh, uh, involves few of the steps that is complex multiplication complex addition real multiplication real addition and tri trigonometric function you should be finding the number of calculations required okay for number of calculations required they would be asking you as some sub questions in, uh, in this question they have given so in, in they would be giving you one certain value of n we should be finding the number of computations or number of calculations for each of the following steps okay like this they would be giving you see uh, if n is equal to 8 compute the number of calculations for complex multiplication addition real multiplication real addition trigonometric function okay for complex multiplication the number of computation is n square for complex addition it is n square minus n for real multiplication it is 4 n square for real addition it is 4 n square minus 2 n this table you should be remembering very important and for trigonometric function it is 2 n square okay Nothing much to do, uh, directly substitute the value of n in all these terms and write, write the number of computations required. Okay, this won't be asking, they won't ask these silly questions. But uh, in order to make you understand and because this is a, the part of the syllabus, so that's why I have done it. Again, you can refer this. Okay. So this is the next question, 4a. So the 4a from model paper. Uh, perform a circular convolution of the following sequences using concentric circle method okay so this is one important method which i have not mentioned it in my conceptual videos very easy method uh, this kind of problem should be appearing okay nothing much to do very easy i'm telling you how to do it they would be giving you uh, uh, to perform circular convolution as you know that they would be giving you two sequences right so here also in this case uh, they have mentioned two sequences okay that is x1 of n and x2 of n x1 of n they have mentioned it as 2 1 2 1 and x2 of n they have mentioned it as 1 2 3 4 okay again uh, these two are having the length uh, of the sequences are 4 so that's why your uh, final end result y of n should be having the length of the sequence as 4 so we should be finding the terms of y of 0 y of 1 y of 2 y of 3 so again draw four concentric circles here because we are we should be finding four terms draw like this four concentric circles okay it's uh, enough well and enough if you draw only one because uh, i'm just making you to understand okay if you understand this concept if you draw one circle and if you could, you could write the final answer you would be getting marks okay so here i'm just in order to make you understand i've just written four circles here so for n is equal to zero that is y of zero what we should be doing is draw inner circle in in the inner circle write the first sequence term okay it, you can write it anyway you can write this also inner circle it's up to you i have read, uh, i have preferred to write the x1 of n in the inner circle start from the utmost right side the first term the second sequence i have written it in the inner circle uh, first term that is one then write all the terms in clockwise direction okay one so next term is here two since we are having four terms so that's why one two three four okay 1 2 3 4 in uh, clockwise direction i've written that is the second sequence now in the outward circle again starts from this end only where we have started uh, where we have started uh, we could we could start from anywhere you should be writing in concentric circle or oh, sorry in the uh, anti clockwise and uh, from where in the inner circle from where you have started corresponding to that only you should be starting for the outer circle as well so that's why outer circle sequence is 2 1 2 1 that is first x1 of n Again, start from here only, since you have started from here, the inner circle, so 2, 1, 2, 1, okay, in clockwise direction, okay, this is the first step, now what to do is, the adjacent terms are there, right, you should be multiplying, okay, so here in this case, 1 into 2 is 2, plus 2 into 1 is, uh, sorry, uh, two into 1 is 2, then 2, 3 is our 6, then 1, 4 is our 4. All these adjacent terms you should be multiplying, okay, and you should be adding them so that we will be getting the first term. It's clear, right? First term, how to find? First term is clear. Now, second term, in order to perform further for y, for n is equal to 1, one change you should be doing that is the outer circle you should be keeping it as it is for all the four circles, okay? You can see here I have not changed the outer circle. Only the change takes place in the inner circle. That is one, you should be, uh, for n is equal to one, one shift you should be doing. That is, so, 
one shift towards anti clockwise direction so that is i have started from here right and i have written it in clockwise direction 1 2 3 4 now we should be shifting one place in anti clockwise direction that is so here if i started from 1 anti clockwise is this direction right so that's why now i'm starting this at this point before i started it at this point now i'm starting it at this point so one shift i've done again from this point write the all the values in anti clockwise direction that is sorry in clockwise direction 1 2 3 4 after doing that change again uh, the procedure remains the same adjacent terms multiply it and write the sum okay at the end that is here in this case it is 2 2s are 4 3 1s are 3 2 4s are 8 1 1s are 1 okay 4 plus 3 plus 8 plus 1 is 16 okay Similarly, for n n is equal to two and n is equal to three, outer circle don't go to touch it. So in the in the previous term we had started from here. Now we are going to start from here. That is one, two, three, four clockwise. Again, multiply the adjacent terms and add it. That is three twos are six, four ones are four, two ones are two, one twos are two. So add them, you would be getting fourteen. Again, at the previously we had started from here. Now we are going to start from here. One, two, three, four in clockwise direction. Outer circle, uh, no touching it. Again, multiply the adjacent terms. Four twos are eight. One ones are one. Two twos are four. One threes are three. Eight plus one plus four plus three is sixteen. So we like this. We have got y of zero, y of one, y of two, y of three using this concentric circle method. So our final sequence y of n would be equal to fourteen, sixteen, fourteen, sixteen. Go for it. So this is using concentric circle method. If you want, you can verify this verification using the normal circular convolution of taking one sequence and rotating it, and rotating it and keeping other sequence as it is. As I have told you in my previous lecture videos, also how to do it. So yeah, that you, you can use that method and verify whether this answer you are getting it or not. So yeah, that's all for this uh, uh, question. Hope you understood this problem of concentric circle method uh, because uh, this question I have not done it in my lectures and all. So yeah this is this was asked in the model paper so that's why please note it down